Pokemon Master Spooky Potobi here and I am at the Hammerlock Castle in Galar. Did you know this place didn't always used to be a Pokemon battle arena, instead it was a castle home to the royalty of the region. I was getting ready for the latest game when suddenly the skies turned dark and I wondered if we were about to experience once again the worst day in Galar's history, the darkest day. And if so, it could be because under there, there is a Pokemon known as Eternatus. Number 890, Eternatus is the gigantic Pokemon, named because it is literally, well, not just gigantic itself, but responsible for gigantism all across the Galar region. It exudes an energy that spreads out into underground dens, beckoning in Pokemon, Pokemon who can even transform into the many Gigantamax forms. These areas are also known as power spots, and the Galar League chairman, Chairman Rose, built gym stadiums here to fund his new Galar Empire, effectively becoming the face of the region. His studies into Eternatus started in the Galar Mines, where he would have learned about Eternatus from studying wishing stars, part of the sleeping Eternatus's body that fell down from the sky across Galar. It is between the clouds where Eternatus has been sleeping for thousands of years. According to the Pokedex, it was inside a meteorite that fell 20,000 years ago. This date has only ever been recorded in the Pokedex once before, as the date of the creation of a Pokemon called Claydol, a sort of automaton sentry guardian that guards sacred sites across the Pokemon world. Its psychic type may be specifically designed to be strong against Eternatus' poison type. Its likeness can even be seen across the Galar region, but I digress. As I mentioned, Eternatus was sleeping above the skies of Galar, but when it awakens it rampages and exudes enough energy to darken the skies of Galar and initiate an event known as the Darkest Day. The namesake for this day came from 3000 years ago, where Eternatus' energy caused Pokemon everywhere across Galar to Gigantamax and rampage. Toxtricity Gigantamaxed for the first time above Turfield, contaminating the earth with toxic sweat. There, the events had been recorded. In other areas, Pokemon didn't just Gigantamax, but Dynamaxed in general. A giant Dugdrio appears in Stowon side, ravaging the earth. And above it all, Eternatus threatened the region with destruction. Luckily, the history for Galar was recorded, and we know what happened next. It is in ruins like this where the history of the Pokemon world is stored, and that's wonderful. Preservation is a brilliant thing. But what happens when the history is wrong? Who decides what remains here for the future to see? According to the histories of Galar, as found in the Dragon Vaults, two heroes appeared with the power of the Fairy Sword and the Fighting Master's Shield. They were able to repel Eternatus, pushing it back to sleep and dealing with the darkest day. Together, they established the castle of Hamelok and became the king heroes of the region. This history can only be seen by a few privileged eyes in the Hamelok Dragon Vault. And while it's not the full picture, it is the closest thing to the truth that the public knows. In other areas of Galar, though, the truth has been distorted. In the more modern town of Motorstoke, a statue of a single hero wielding both a sword and shield can be found, as if to distract from the true nature of history. There is another statue more in line with the true history of Galar, hidden in Stoan's side behind a mural depicting the truth of Zacian and Zamazenta, the sword and shield that aided the heroes. In Sir Chester 2, a banner can be seen revealing the location of these Pokemon's shrine in the slumbering Weald. And the Weald itself is a sacred place, an odd area of forest separating the main region of Galar with the land of the Crown Tundra below it. It is here a Pokemon known as Calyrex was said to have once moved a large forest and all the Pokemon living there to a new location overnight. And in its Gigantamax form, legend says that by using its power to see all events from past to future, this Pokemon saved the creatures of a forest from a meteorite strike. Could this forest be the Slumbering Well, a location moved up from the Crown Tundra to protect it from a meteorite that was in fact the first crash landing of Eternatus 20,000 years ago? A place where part of its body, a giant wishing star, is said to reside still today, an area researched by Chairman Rose. But then why isn't Calyrex mentioned in the Dragon Vaults or any of the hidden history statues? A clue, though, might be found in Zacian's Pokedex entry, which describes it as the Fairy King's sword, and Zamazenta describes it as the Fighting Master's shield. This could also be a reference to the other DLC Pokemon Kubfu, who is the Fighting Master, and of course, Calyrex is the Fairy King. 
Is it possible that this duo of a king and a fighter are somehow tied to the hero kings of the ancient past of Galar? It would be peculiar for sure, but these kinds of patterns repeat all across the Pokemon world. In the Chaos region, it said that two brother kings went to war. In the Unova region, two twin hero kings and two twin heroes again in the Galar region. This surely can't be a coincidence. A pair is one thing, but three of the same? All with dates stretching back to around the same time? Something's up here. In Unova, we learn of the twin heroes of truth and ideals. Their ties to royalty are also apparent in both the Zekrom and Reshiram movies, as well as the crown being an actual theme in the Unova games. The very opening cutscene shows us the coronation of N wearing what looks to be the relic crown, an item that looks like the head of Zacian. The Relic Crown and other ancient items can be found in the Abyssal Ruins, a castle sunken into the sea in Eastern Unova. And in Western Unova, there is another castle that can be found sunken into the sands. It's possibly from here that Team Plasma found this second crown. So we have two kings, two castles, two heroes. Is this the same from Galar? When we look to the date of the Relic item of 2,500 years ago and the darkest day being 3,000 years ago, it's not too far away for there to not be a connection. As well, when we look to real-world inspirations, Unova is based off of New York and Galar, England. It seems likely that at one time the monarchy of the Galar region moved over to the Unova region before it fell, tearing itself apart, making way for modern-day Unova. But the story of twin hero kings doesn't stop there. In Kalos, a war raged 3,000 years ago between two brothers who were also kings. AZ, the king of Kalos at that time, warred against his own brother, the ancestor of Lysander. After many lives were lost, the brother of AZ saw the error of his ways and buried the ultimate weapon, the device used to end the war on a very dark day. 3,000 years ago, the ultimate weapon fired, taking with it the life force of Pokemon. That force, that infinity energy, has been at the core of the Pokemon series over many generations now. It is believed that this energy that allows Pokemon to Mega Evolve is just one expression of infinity energy. In Alola, we see that very energy seep through Ultra Wormholes and cause Pokemon to transform to get bigger and become Totem Pokemon. In Galar, Gigantamax Pokemon. And even in the old days of Hisui, that energy came from the sky out of the space-time distortion and caused Pokemon to become frenzied and noble Pokemon, bigger versions of their regular forms. Across the last few generations of Pokemon and the entire history of the Pokemon world, it's hard to know how many of these events are connected or the same. However, Hisui's connections don't stop there, as there is one more important part to this mystery. For all the questions that Generation 8 of Pokemon throws at us, there is one big one, which is, what's the deal with all of the horses? Seriously, Glastria and Spectria, Dialga and Palkia in their origin forms, there are so many equine-like creatures, and they all tie back to Arceus, the god of the Pokemon world. Heck, we even got a shiny ponis of this generation for free. But why? What's the deal with the ancient past of the Pokemon world and horses? Well, it could be that this generation of Pokemon is preparing us for something coming in Generation 9. A new darkest day, an ultimate end to Pokemon, something apocalyptic. In Western mythology, there is a popular tale that suggests that the end will be heralded by four horsemen of the apocalypse. Pokemon is a lot less dark than that, but it does love its symbolism, and across this recent generation of Pokemon, four horses have come, signifying perhaps the end of time time and space, and also death in the coldness of Glastria and the shadowy spectral form of Spectre. And this generation of Pokemon goes full circle with Dialga and Palkia trying to take on a horse-like form that allows it to imitate and emulate God. Eternatus itself also has ties to Arceus in its Eternamax form, taking the shape of a giant's hand. Arceus is said to have shaped the world with its 1,000 arms, so could it be that Eternatus is a corrupted, poisoned hand of God, now turning against its own creation? Its skeletal form signifying the death of God itself. It seems to me that all does not look good for the Pokemon world going forward. If Eternatus really is back, Pokemon Masters, then we may be doomed without a new hero to come and save the day. I hope that could be you. So hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master.
As always, a massive thank you to those of you who support this channel on Patreon. You make this channel possible, and a special thank you to the big patrons of this month, the Elgator, Jed Rubin, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you.